so I have to we have some. Um, yeah, so basically it's a it's a shot, a small shot, five to ten seconds of body mechanics and a little bit of acting. Um, you can see the reference that I'm going to be using. It's uh, my character is like an old wizard that is rolling casting a spell and imagine like a ball of fire in his hand, but then it like it'll fizzle out. And then and when he breaks his back Rolling. and, uh, and yeah, so that's, that's my sort of shot that I'm doing. Um, but yeah, uh, so there's that, um, yeah. So get, get ready to start gathering reference. Uh, I'm going to give you time to do that during this class. Uh, and then, uh, I'd like to hear what you guys are thinking of doing for your project. Um, and yeah, it'll be great. Um, but yeah, any, anything about that unclear, Oscar? I'm very down to go over it again um, or clarify some stuff. Got it, thank you, nice, nice. Yeah, and then there's just the little requirements down here, uh, five to 10 seconds, have the reference ready because I'll, I'll be looking at, at people's reference. Uh, a character of your design, um, doing an action with good weight shifting and body mechanics can be a fight, a leap, whatever you want, you're the director. You're the director. You're, you get to choose what your character is doing. Uh, sell the character's action with acting. Exactly. Uh, Strongman doesn't know his own strength, but very gentle. Like try to get that personality sort of communicated. Old wizard breaks his back. You know, well, whatever. You know. Um, yeah. Uh, again, you're the, you're the director. You get to choose what how how your character acts in the scene. And uh, yeah, just be very clear with it in your posing. Try to get those try to just communicate all of that through uh without words you know because we're not going to be using words on this one this is not a lip sync assignment um any any questions about that before i before i start uh showing you guys some some cool resources so is it like is it is it is it like any kind of movement like let's say if i, I if i want to do a character dancing because dancing can have expression in it would oh. that be okay yeah yeah absolutely uh what's the, what's the personality you're trying to convey there with the dance um kind of um kind of like sophisticated structure to then like all of a sudden like wacky okay okay interesting yeah yeah i'm down for it i'm down for it for sure um just just be sure to time it out uh so you don't go like over 10 seconds because that'd, that'd be a lot to do um but yeah yeah i'm, com I'm completely fine with that any other questions? Does anyone already like have an idea of what they want to do and like just wants to ask me like if it's all right, like Rodney did? I'm gonna go around and ask people for that anyways. But uh, but yeah. I'm sorry, I kind of missed it. But are we going to show the references that we uh, that we took in class along with the animation? Uh, yeah, like because because we're gonna um like next week. I'd like to see a rough version of the animation and I want to see what your reference is that you're basing it off of, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, any other questions? All right. Okay. Sounds good. So um i want to share just some cool cool uh references for for uh this is mostly action based and like body mechanics based you know um but uh this one it's like this it's this uh user on twitter that's like super amazing uh they do a lot of like let's go to their media uh they do a lot of just movements and, and, and they set up their camera to be from all four sides, you know, and they do it in, in all four directions, all cardinal directions. Let me, let me link that in here as well. I'm also gonna put that on the Discord in more free resources. But, uh, but yeah, I absolutely love this, um, the, the, this, this crew, look at this. Like they have this cool front flip samurai sword. And then they have, just like big punching and yeah like the, the the way that this person's acting this out they look like a very 
laborious, like almost some sort of like troll or something. Cause they're not doing like front front on punches. They're kind of doing like swings with their arm as if they were like lumbering, you know? So you can, you can really get like, you can really break these down and see like how a lot of these sort of actions are, you know? Like, oh man, it's so cool. I really recommend like looking through here. You might get inspired by something and be like, oh man, I want to make this my, uh, my, my, my animation, you know? Uh, some of it's better than others, you know? But um, like this one's super cool that they have this. They have this just, mm, mm, mm. and it has, it has a cool rhythm, you know? Like it goes like, boom, boom, boom. Like, it, like they, they, it's, it's really nice that they break it down for you, you know? Um, and you can feel free to like take this reference and like maybe expand upon it, you know, like, like if you added like a little bit of hang time at the top here, you know, like that's, that's cool by me. Um, if you want to, like some of these silhouettes might not read as clearly, like during the, these frames, he's all like stacked up. If you wanted to get, if you wanted to like take this, this, hand, uh, this leg right there and kind of break the silhouette with it so that cartwheels look a bit more uh noticeable then then by all means just as long as you're using reference for for this stuff and again your your reference can be yourself it could it could absolutely be yourself and uh don't think that you have to be like flipping through the air or something like you can do like you saw my reference like i'm very stable on the ground i'm not an acrobat um but i just want to share this with you guys because it's like it's, it, I don't know, it, I, I found this profile and I was like, this is the best thing ever. Um, like they have, like, look at this. Oh, it's so, it's so badass. Look at that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they show it from every direction. Like, come on. An animator couldn't ask for anything more, you know? That's, that's just perfect. Also, I like how his shirt gets like folded over him every time. <laughs> But yeah, it's it, this is an amazing profile. I just wanted to share this with you guys. Like this, this could be your body mechanic, you know, like that. That's your movement, and then have some sort of acting. But yeah, awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Um, also, just based more on uh, acting and timing, um, we have. In my uh, my course content, we have an every frame of painting video. If you've never seen uh, this YouTube channel, I really recommend it. It's Hello. it's beautiful. Like it, this guy goes through and he breaks down all of like whatever. It's not it's not just only action comedy. You can see visual comedy right here. Edgar Wright stuff like uh, uh, Scott Pilgrim and then the uh, um, Shaun of the Dead, that, that director. Um, but yeah, so he just breaks down a bunch of different things. I really recommend if you're, if you're looking to get into the sort of the filmmaking side of things, uh, check out this channel. It's invaluable. Like he, he, he'll, he'll break down every scene for you, but, uh, but yeah, Jackie Chan is a, a, an amazing, uh, representation of like acting and, uh, acting and body mechanics, you know, like, like you can tell what his character's thinking, boom. And then he, he's being threatening, you know, walks in, gives that little comedic pause of timing for the guy to recognize that his gun doesn't work, you know, and then bah, goes in there with the, the fist, you know. So, so please feel free to, to look at, uh, you know, Jackie Chan movies. Like they, they, they have great timing, action, acting. It's like, it's all there for you, basically. Um, if you, uh, yeah, but, but I, I do, I do recommend trying to, to shoot your own reference. Cause it's just, it's just a lot of fun. You get kind of into the, into the character yourself, but just know that I'm, I'm fine with you guys taking reference from other places as well. You know, like it doesn't always have to be yourself. Um, and if it's an action for like something that you can't, um, that you can't really find uh jackie loves fixed camera angles and not shaky cam for his early fights so he's great reference exactly yeah he keeps the camera pretty pretty level throughout so you can read all of the action and it's a that's like a, an amazing idea for an animator as well um 
because we're all about having action read on like that first go through. You want it to be easily understood. And, and that's why the, his, his films are like amazing for that. So I uh, really want you guys to check out that out for some inspiration. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you have an action that you can't find, um, think of something adjacent that's already been animated. So like if you have a super powered character that's like a hulking behemoth, look at like the Hulk in uh, Marvel movies, look at uh, Kingpin in uh, Spider-Verse. Uh, if you, I don't recommend animating like a, a, a dragon for this, but like since dragons don't exist uh, in, in real life, we only, we, we can have some nice reference from movies that have animated the dragon, you know, can the character for the assignment be a creature? Uh, yeah, it, it, it can. Um, I'm just worried that you'd run out of time if you, if you have a quadruped that's acting. Uh, but if you think you can you can conquer that in, in enough time, then by all means, by all means. Um, and if you're shooting like reference for the, the acting portion of it, um, uh, you can just use yourself and just kind of use, use your like upper body and just pretend. I mean, it'll, it'll be a bit weird feeling, I know, but like Disney animators do it all the time. They do it all the time. I, I don't know if you guys saw that talk that Disney gave, but uh, it was like those four animators, three, I think it was three animators, three animators. And they all like gave one of their, their shots up for, for uh, reference there, you know? Uh, and you can see that he, he uh, like the, one of the animators was like breaking down his thought process. And then he showed like, I don't know, just reference of him acting as a dog being sad. And it was, like, <laughs> it was just funny. Uh, but yeah, like that's completely viable. Um, but yeah, just be a, a mindful of time. Just be mindful of time. But yeah. Uh, does someone have a question? I hear someone tabbing in. Oh, I guess not. Um, but yeah, so that's a great reference. Um, yeah, uh, Marvel movies, great reference for action um, and just like fantastical things. Uh, but yeah, just if you're going to animate something that you can't like, find easily think of a another movie that you've seen that has it in there and then just see see how they like how that character portrays themselves you know um anyone unclear on reference anyone unclear on uh um, like what the what the direction that i want you guys to go with in this project is again i have that little handout sheet on on beach board if you want to check that out um if you're like, oh man, do I meet the requirements? Uh, yeah, uh, D. Tran, I see you, see you raising your hand. Uh, you're muted. Yeah, right I now. have a question. Oh yeah, yeah. What's up? Uh, about those uh, um, references, um, mm -hmm. like like what we just seen uh, uh, in in um, we can see those movement in almost uh, every martial uh, movies. But uh, so if I want to use this movement, uh, do you consider it a plagiarism? No, no, because um, I'm, I'm more concerned with you kind of uh, learning how the body moves in more interesting ways, right? Like they're, they're doing crazy movements that we might not have, have animated before. Um, so like i i don't i don't count that as plagiarism that's just reference taking inspiration from another source you know so so yeah uh but yeah just make sure that you guys stay within the time requirement i don't want you guys to like be like oh i want to do this this and this and then you end up you're like oh i have to animate 20 seconds now like no let's let's keep it let's keep it nice and doable for the three weeks but yeah uh but yeah so so i i don't i don't count uh reference as as plagiarism since it's going to be all of your drawings and all of your your art kind of applied to that sort of base, you know, taking inspiration from it. Uh, but yeah, great question. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? All right. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, so um let's see it's 11 o'clock it's 11 o'clock okay um 
tell you what, tell you what, would you guys be opposed to doing an early lunch? Because I'm thinking we could go to lunch. We could, you could kind of mull it over and get like an idea of what you want to do in your head. Uh, what, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Are you guys opposed? Are you guys for it? What are you guys thinking? I'm for it. I'm for it. Sure. All right. All right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So let's quit for lunch then. Uh, let's have it. I get lunch a bit later. Oh, dang. Okay. Well, I mean, there, there'll be a lot of in-class time. So, so you'll be able to just kind of eat on the side. But, um, but yeah, so let's break for an hour. Um, since I want you guys to be thinking about like what you want to animate as well, let's do it for an hour and 20. So let's, let's come back at, um, let's come back at 1220. And I want, I want you guys to look when you get back to, to have an idea of what you want to do. Um, maybe on, on the, the break, you could be searching for more reference. You're like, oh, what, what can I, uh, what can I, what can I do for the scene? You know? Um, so yeah. So yeah, meet back at 12.20 and have an idea of what you want to do. What do you want to animate? Nice. All right. See you guys at 12.20. Um, all right, so if you have your if you have your reference and you have your like character that you that you want to animate ready, um, you're you're good to go on to Adobe Animate or whatever um, whatever like animation suite that you're using. So let me share my screen. Boom, right there. Very cool. And so this is my wizard character, right? And uh, you'll see that I'm taking a lot of shortcuts on the character. Uh, this, this is fine by me, you know, like, like we're not defining, uh, oops, sorry, there we go. Uh, we're not defining the, um, a lot of his features. Like I, I barely have eyes because he's like, he's supposed to be like that, that old sort of wizard type, you know. I didn't do a super long beard because I was like, that's going to be a lot of line. Just be very economical. Or econ yeah, economical, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be be very economic, uh, economical with your line usage because every single frame is going to have these lines that make up the character. So you don't want to don't want to have too elaborate of of a design and then paint yourself into a corner and be like, oh man, I can't finish this in time. Um, because I, I, I want these to be a, a decent level of polish. Um, it, it's it, it doesn't have to be like studio ready, but like. Yeah, I want it to be good looking. Like I want it, I want the character to read. I want the the it to be on model and accurate. You know, I don't want big shifting in in terms of uh, size of the character. Uh, but yeah, uh, so this is. Let me move you guys to the side over here. This is uh, Adobe Anime. It's a nice little, uh, nice little program. Um, it used to be called Adobe Flash back in the day, um, but they rebranded it and uh, have been adding some new features onto it. Um, I'm I'm only using this one because I I'm told that you guys have uh, nice access to the Creative Cloud um, for a very affordable price. I, so I, I'm using the one that you most of you can can get access to. And as always, this uh, these programs do use the drawing tablet, you know, so be mindful of that um it is it's gonna make your life a lot better <laughs> if you're if you're drawing on the computer and uh and yeah so let's get started so this is already like a scene let's let's start from a fresh scene though for you guys um and make sure that i'm recording yeah all right cool uh so file new and then to bring up this little UI. Uh, we're going to be going with full HD because we're we're, uh, we're going to you would tailor this aspect ratio to your goal 
size, you know? So if you were like animating specifically for Instagram, I know they have that like square, like that, that, that square aspect ratio. So you do something by like 1080 by 1080, you know? Uh, but we're, we're going entirely for um, a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So be sure to use uh, a full HD setting, 1920 by 1080. Um, frame rate, uh, we'll just leave it at 24 FPS for now, because that's, that's our, our regular film frame rate. Um, like all, all film that you see is like 24 frames a second. Uh, if you remember, like when Avatar came out, like the, the blue people Avatar, uh, it might have looked like weirdly smooth. It's because I, I believe they were showing that in either 30 frames a second or 60, I think one 30. But yeah, it's like it's like a little bit smoother, and then you're like, oh man, why does this why does this feel why does this feel different? But it's, it's just the frame rate. But um, yeah, our eyes are very attuned to 24 frames a second, um, so we're gonna keep that. Uh, I don't um, I don't that that doesn't mean that I'm gonna have you guys drawing 24 frames a second. Uh, we're gonna work on twos, meaning we're gonna skip every other frame. We're just gonna hold every every frame for uh, for one frame, you know. Um, or one additional frame. Uh, so, so yeah, so we're essentially going to be animating at 12 FPS. Um, but I just want you guys to know that so you're not freaking out. You're like, oh man, I have so many drawings to make. But, uh, but yeah, only worry about this character animation. We're not going to go into any of this stuff. Full HD, 24 FPS, uh, and action script 3.0. And create. There you go. And it's going to give you a, a new uh, blank canvas right there. Um, and you can zoom in and out by holding control and scrolling in and out um, to, to adjust things. And very similar to, uh, to Photoshop, you can hold space and left click and drag to sort of pan around this, uh, this canvas. So yeah, uh, if you've used Photoshop before, which I'm, I'm pretty sure like the vast majority of you have at this point. It's going to be very second nature to you. Um, just a, a, there's a there's a few differences because it's this is obviously tailored towards animating rather than like painting and stuff. But but yeah. So up at the top we have our classic just like file um, edit view like all all these classic menus like these are these are very uh, very natural. We don't have to get too um, to in 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 tune with these with these uh, with these pull downs because we're mostly just going to be animating pretty quickly here. Um, the, some main things is that you have your selection tool. You have a, a free transform tool. It's on a different key binding than Photoshop, so be careful. If you're if you're coming from Photoshop, you're probably used to that. With, with, that's just Control T, I think, right? So this is Q in this case, um, but this is more for um, Something called symbols. That's going to be that's going to come more into play when we're doing puppet animation for hand drawn stuff. We don't have to worry too much about that. Um, and we have your lasso selection. Uh, you also have a fluid brush tool and your classic brush tool. Uh, these are just two different ways to draw. So if I click on that, uh, the hot key is B to activate that that brush, and you can see that it, it makes that rasterized line. Let me size up this brush a little bit so you can see it more. But yes, yeah, so that's classic brush. Um, you'll notice that uh, there, there's a difference between, uh, I'm gonna shrink chat actually for now, sorry. Sorry guys, I shrunk you. Um, you'll notice that there's a difference between uh, classic brush and fluid brush. I actually prefer fluid brush because it has some kind of, it has a little bit of auto smoothing and uh, stabilization, you know? So you can get like a little bit you can get a little bit cleaner in there and see how it like resampled that. Like I'll have like a little bit of an imperfect shape and then it will kind of smooth those edges a little bit. So I really like that, that brush, uh, the hot key for that one is shift B, shift B for this one, or you can just find it up here. Um, I'm like still trying to get it out of my muscle memory to press B for that. Um, also, if you don't like any of the, um, if you don't like uh, where is it? Any of the hotkeys you can you can re uh, rebind those to uh, to different to different keys depending on what you want. Um, but everyone's setup is different, so I'm not going to enforce any sort of 
uh, hotkeys, but yeah, you can you can find those in keyboard shortcuts. And then yeah, it's interesting. There's a giant list of uh, tools and stuff in there. And you can rebind it there. Um, but yeah, so this is your uh, the fluid brush, and then E is eraser, the eraser tool. Um, you know, it just erases whatever you drew. Pretty pretty ex uh, self explanatory. Um, there is one thing that I like that you can um, you can click you can uncheck this box right here this sync settings with classic br brush because if you don't then it's gonna like when you resize your classic brush it's gonna resize your eraser as well um, and I like to keep those different I usually like to have my eraser just a little bit larger so I can capture all that line um, and then this is just your regular like shape tools where you can just drag out a shape onto the canvas a line is gonna make nice straight lines for you. Uh, but yeah, um, all that stuff. And then yeah, pen tool, you can do uh, little, little Bezier curves, text tool, you can, you can start typing stuff in there. Um, but yeah, we're mostly gonna be concerned with our brush tool, eraser tool, and uh, the timeline down here. Uh, as always, you also have your, your color, your fill color and your stroke color. Uh, stroke is that that stuff on the outside, I believe, I think, like the, the border of this rectangle would fall under that and like the line tool would be in the stroke color, I think. Um, and then hand tool is just on your space bar. So it's just a nice, easy way to, to drag the canvas around. But that's all just kind of regular stuff if you use Photoshop. Um, the uh, in your tool palette on the properties. Also, if you if you don't see if, if like I have something opened up over here that you don't see, you can probably find it in the window. A uh, little window drag down menu here. Uh, it has all of your little uh, sort of windows that you'd see over here. Um, and I'm, I'm just using the, in the workspaces, I'm just using the essentials tab because that's what it defaults to. And I'm going to be, I want it to be nice and clear for you guys if you watch this back. Um, but yeah. So down, so now, now down here, I want to just give you a little demonstration. So uh, if you've used Photoshop, layers make sense to you here. And um, let me get a drink real quick. Layers make a lot of sense. And I'm going to use layer one as uh, my background. And I could just rename that as well. So I can just say background. Um, also, if you have like a background that you want to use from somewhere else, um, you uh, and you have like a, a PNG or something, you can just drop that into. Uh, you can just drag it from your your file browser into this window, and it will drop into that. Um, but yeah, I just want to have a nice, nice little. I'm just going to do a basic uh, ball bounce for you guys. It's going to be amazing, just beautiful stuff, you know. Uh, so let's get this ground, very cool. And then let's add a new layer. Because we want, we want to have all of our um, different characters uh, and animating objects uh, to be on a different layer. Um, and usually we will set it up to be, like we'll have a rough layer. And then you'll have like, the, and then this is where we're gonna do the majority of our animating. And then you'll have like a cleanup layer. So where you, you, you actually do the, the inking and, and get like a really nice line drawing. Uh, and then you'll also have a color layer. And, and so those would all be separate layers for like one character, you know, um, and then that you'd send that over to a uh, shadows and lights uh, department. Uh, and then they'll do another layer on top of that and just modulate that, that color to, to sort of look like there's actual lighting. But, this is just, we're, we're only talking about rough animation right now, right guys? So let's get started. Uh, you guys don't have to do this with me. I'm just kind of giving a little, little example. Let's get a, a nice, let's get a nice uh, ball in here, you know? And you'll see as I draw, it has made a key on this timeline here. You see, see how this little gray rectangle with the dot in it appeared there. That's a, that's a key for us. So that's a that's a keyframe right there, um, and the hotkeys for adding and removing keyframes all fall under 
F5, F6, and F7. So if I click further down this timeline on my rough layer and press F5, boom, you'll notice that one, my background has disappeared, right? That background only exists on frame one now. And you can see why, because on the timeline, that frame only extends there. So if we go into our background layer, let's click like way over here and press five, see how it gave us a bunch of frames of that, of that background layer. So now we have that background layer being kind of persistent. And that was just F5, right guys? And uh, let's go into, let's go back into our rough layer. You'll notice that when I pressed F5, it extended the hold of that keyframe all the way over to like 20, where I had my where I had my mouse. What I can do is drag on uh, left click, drag on that timeline, and if you do Shift F5, boom, it just removes those keys. You see that? It just removes that. Um, so F5, um, F5 inserts frames. And then Shift F five removes them. See how I'm see how I'm adding and removing time from that timeline right there. Really nice little editing tool right there. Um, and then uh, F seven inserts a blank keyframe, right? So if I if I'm on this frame, and uh, well, I, I, so for instance, if I'm on this frame, you're like, okay, I'm drawing, and then since it's on a hold and if you start drawing then you're like i want to draw the next sort of pose for that ball oh whoops it like copied over that frame uh from that that, that data from the first frame so now you have two balls in the same frame and it's, that's just not right so usually our workflow is to sort of go over one and i usually like to press f7 to insert a blank keyframe and then draw the next frame of the animation there boom and to scrub back and forth, it's comma and period. So comma and period is gonna go forward and backward in time. And I wanna have this held for a little bit longer. So I'm gonna press F5, right? Like I wanna animate on, on twos because we're at 24 FPS. I only wanna be, I only wanna be using um, I only want to be animating at, at uh, uh, 12 FPS, you know, so, so that's why we're doing that. And notice how if I, like, even though there's an empty frame, right, like I went past that frame range, if I draw, it's going to copy that data from the frame before and then put that uh, new drawing in there. That's not what we want, right? So get used to pressing F7 on these empty frames, on these new frames. And then you can get a new ball in there. And there you go. So we have a few frames in there. They're not great, I'm going to be honest. Um, but yeah, they're fine. Um, something else you might be really interested in is onion skinning. So onion skinning is the equivalent, if you've only animated with paper, uh, of when you're on that light table and you can see like the, the previous frames and then the next frames in, in your little paper stack that you're flipping. Um, it's, it's basically that. That's basically what onion skinning is. Um, and you can see it right here in the UI. Sorry, I was getting a drink. Uh, so if you activate onion skin, boom, look at that. I can see the, the frame right before this, you know, it's just sitting out there. And if I, if I scrub back in the timeline with uh, comma, you can see that it's showing me the previous and the next frame. And you can uh, hold left click on this and get some advanced settings. And like say, cause I'm colorblind, I might want to change these colors, you know, to something else. Uh, they seem fine right now, but uh, but yeah, you can, you can change how many frames it's going to display. I usually keep it to like two or three um, because if you, if you get a lot in there, it can be kind of confusing, you know, so. So just be careful about that. And then, uh, yeah, starting opacity 30%, I want to keep those nice and kind of uh, uh, low detail, easier to see. Uh, and that's looking great. That's looking fantastic. 
And then, yeah, I can see that I've kind of made this, this uh, circle oblong in this drawing. So I can just take my selection tool. It's also on the hotkey of V and do that. And I can go press shift B to be back in my brush. And I can really start getting a proper, uh, a proper sized ball in here. I know it's not the prettiest. We can always go and clean that up, you know? Um, but yeah, so we're just doing that. And I'm just, we're just doing this for, for demonstration purposes. And then let's clean up this one. We could potentially uh, transform this one, but I want to get used to to draw in every frame, you know. Um, this also might be useful, a, a useful time to uh, up the amount of frames because I want to see the before and after, you know, like, because I currently, I like right before that, it was only showing me two frames, but you can see now that it's showing me more. Um, and now I can really kind of track that arc of the ball. Boom, and then I'm going to press F5 to insert a keyframe right there. Boom, and then insert a blank key with F7. So now you can see it's getting a little bit, um, it's getting a little bit more fleshed out. And we're kind of stretching that bad boy a little bit there. Um, then I'm gonna press F5, observe on the timeline, because I want to have this be showing for two frames. So F5. Then I'm gonna scrub one frame over, press F7. So yeah, get real used to F5, shift F5 to remove frames and F7. They're 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 the bread and the butter of this whole operation. Boom, then it's kind of squashing right there uh, because all of that force is going downward in that ball. It's, this probably won't read well because this ball dropped from like not very far up um, to like, it's not gonna be exerting that amount of force on there from that, but just for demonstration purposes. And then, uh, so I, I gave that another hold. And let's go in boom, F7, oops, there we go, F7. And it's gonna give us another drawing, oops, I'm on my, I'm on my uh, eraser tool. So let's get back into the brush. Here we go. Very nice, very nice. Boom, bang, F7, more of this. There we go. F5 to give me another frame, F7, simple. F5, F7. So yeah, and then for some playback, what you can do is, let me give that another frame. Um, if you wanna see this looped, um, of course this won't loop correctly because like I didn't animate it all. It, it doesn't end up in the same place. Like we're going forward on the, on the uh, in space. Uh, but what you can do is you can press this little loop button right here and then you get these little time sliders. And you can just slide that to the end of your animation in the start. And then you can press enter. And there you go. Ah, the illusion of life. The illusion of life of bouncy ball. It's magic. Uh, <laughs> not really, but um, but yeah, so that's that's just the, the bare bones of Adobe, Adobe Animate, I, uh, I don't really see us needing any other tools at this point. 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll expand our, our tool set um, in the weeks to come. Um, but yeah, just for this first class though, I want you guys to know how to just make some rough animation like this, you know? Uh, but I'll, I'll show you how I do it for my character in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, any questions about that? Any questions about anything in the UI or, uh, or the timeline, anything like that? All right. Okay. Let me check the chat. Make sure no one. Make sure no one's. Uh, no one's freaking out in here. Um, yeah. All right. Sounds good. Um. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me know if you, you have any questions. Um. I'm gonna go into back into my wizard file. And I'm just gonna kind of animate on that and you guys can watch me and then start doing some of your the animation of your own so this is my character um you should probably have like a like a, a good idea of what you want the character to be uh, i remember keep it keep it kind of uh nice and simple because if i like gave this guy a pattern on his on his robe like it would be pretty hard to draw that every frame, you know, and still meet our, our deadlines. Um, but yeah, but it's all, it's always a good idea to, to sort of know what your character is looking like before you, you bring them into the scene. Uh, and then let's look at my reference. So basically our next step is to start, um, start getting our key poses. Kind of represented and then bringing those into the scene like a like kind of drawn to our character so what are some uh just, just to quiz you guys anyone can respond anyone at all what would be some key poses out of this uh this video right here what would be some key poses? The beginning and end of the turn. Oh yeah, yeah. So like, uh, oops, let's get this in there. Oops. Ah, keep your MP, please. Um, so like right here you're saying? So like right there and there, I'm guessing. Yeah, like the uh, the beginning of the turn, the end of the turn, and the middle. Yeah. And then you and then you would like uh, do in between. Yeah, a hundred percent. Dang, look at that. It's an animation two student talking right there. That's that's a uh, perfect. Uh, I'd say the raising of the hand, the lowest part of the lunge, and the rise at the very end. Yeah. Uh, oh, I messed up. I'm using. All my hockeys and my brainers scrambled. Um, yeah, uh, I'd say the raising of the hand. Yeah, so hand raise right there. Yep, lowest part of the lunge, and then the rise at the very end. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, you guys are right. Um, basically, there's um, a lot of key poses in here because I do the spin as well, you know? So we have our starting pose, and then we would, we would need a passing pose in there somewhere, like, like around here. And then foot planted pose. You always wanna get that contact in there. And then from there, the, uh, the, the hand rising up and this, toe contacting and yeah the other two that they mentioned and then finally um agony i guess that'd, that'd be another one um but yeah 
awesome stuff. So let's get, let's just start them on this post, you know. So I'm gonna minimize that win or uh, make the window smaller. And yeah, I wish there was like a reference that I can just keep on top of everything. Uh, I have one called like pure ref, which works for uh, simple images, but uh, I haven't found one for a video. So if y'all find one that like lets you have a video on top of everything, uh, that'd be super awesome. Um, yeah, I don't think there's a way in here. I wonder if there's a way on this tab. No, dang. Yeah, that'd be so cool. Yeah, so let's get let's go ahead and uh, start just drawing our character. You know, so this is after you have your reference ready and open and like in front of you on your computer. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do a new layer, and this one's gonna be rough layer, and it's gonna be over all this. Uh, this is just reference character ref. So I'm just gonna put. Character ref. Uh, question for the first project: Can we use any platform, or does it have to be Adobe Animate? Um, using Procreate for this first one, I think you can. Uh, I'm just worried about exporting because I don't I don't know what file format Procreate exports in for like an animated uh, file. But uh, but yeah, if you if you can export something that we can put into um, uh, if you if you uh, export something that we can put into like premiere later, then that's completely fine by me. That's completely fine by me. Um, yeah. Just answering some questions in chat. But yeah, so let's make that uh, its own layer. And then I'm also going to turn down the opacity on it. And I just did that by right clicking and going to the layer properties. Just so we have something there, you know, uh, it might get an annoying and then we'll have to like visit, uh, uh, hide it for um, for in, in a little bit, you know, because, you know, we're going to be drawing a bunch of frames over this. So, so yeah. So let's draw this character. Let's get him in there. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm just going to start kind of on this third over here. And let's look at my pose. My pose is a dignified wizard, I guess. Um, we could push the oldness of him, you know, like we could, we could push because he, he, he breaks, it, it hurts his back, you know, doing this. So we could kind of make him a little bit more, um, I'm just going to straight up kind of make it very uh, similar to the that, that starting frame, oh, that, that starting uh, reference. Um, and yeah, remember, just, just work rough right here, guys. We're just trying to get our animation represented. Um, and we can go even more basic in this. As you see, I'll do in a little bit. Um, that, that leg kind of looks a little bit broken. We need to help that out. Uh, but yeah, there we go. And then I can kind of give him like a little bit of a hunch little bit of a hunch over and get that get that elderly uh, sort of look. This guy's cast a lot of spells in his life. Whoops, sorry about that. And uh, it's just not the, not the same as he used to be. Let's look at that pose. Boom, okay. So arm kind of going down a little bit, then hand up here. I'm thinking of using Clip Studio, but it exports in straight MP4 files, not FLA or anything. I, that, that should be fine. That should be fine. Um, yeah, that, that, that'll be fine because you can bring an MP4 into Premiere because uh, eventually we're going to have like a reel of all of your animation at the end of the class, you know, um, not like at the end of this class, but like at the end of the semester, you know, so just so you can compile it, you know, I want to make sure you guys can compile it. 
And in my source pose, my arm is breaking the silhouette here. If I, because if I had him hunched over and also doing that, like a, like, a, ugh, like a more decrepit version of that. Like, ugh. Uh, th this, this arm might not break the silhouette, but uh, always pay attention to your silhouettes, guys. We want to kind of break it forcefully in this case. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push that arm out a little bit and just give him, give him something breaking that silhouette because we want these poses to read clearly. And then I'm just going to do some basic... Uh, low detail stuff right there. Look at that nose and boom. Nice. And then I'm gonna put a hole on that. So boom, F5. I'm just gonna get that for a few frames actually. Probably do even more. So 10 frames of waiting right there. And then let's see. So yeah, you can. It's really helpful if you uh, that you open your your reference on something that you can kind of frame by frame, because you can see that my I have like a slight anticipation here. Look at me go slightly left in frame, slightly left, just very slightly, and that's what I'm using. And then I then I kind of go down a little bit. Like if you look at my pelvis, it starts to lean forward and go down. And then that's that's when I'm lifting up that foot. That's where a lot of anticipation comes from, is from when you're shuffling your feet around trying to like support yourself in a new pose. Um, but yeah, so right here. So that little that little foot turn. So let's get that. That'd be our next pose. Um, whoops, there we go. And then I'm going to do go to this frame and do F7. Uh, and let's get our onion skin on. Um, I'm also going to turn off the, the ref at this point. So I have I did that small foot shuffle, right? So that foot is now planar with the camera. And my body, it has kind of, my pelvis is almost over that, uh, that foot. So foot kind of shifts a little bit back and then pelvis is, go is, is going right over it. So, so let's get that going here. And I'm gonna, you're, you're gonna notice that I'm getting a little bit more loose with it, right? I'm not going for the whole character. I just wanted to establish that uh, that first frame, you know. Um, let's see, also my my other hand is crossing over. It's crossing uh, uh, past my torso because I start with that left flame and then it transfers to that right fist and then he tries to to cast that spell um but it doesn't it goes awry obviously so there we go very nice very nice Might need to move this back a little bit. Oops. Uh, these lasso tools. Just because my pose looks a little bit off balance for where my feet are. And let's just move that over. Nice. And then I'm going further along. So, yeah, this is, you can see why I need something that I can just uh, scrub through with left and right on the keys. So I get into 
an interesting pose. You can see that my, my toes point towards each other because I need to get enough uh, mobility for that, that spin in there. So let's get, let's get that, this one planted. And let's do an F5. Uh, I'm gonna go onto that first layer and just give myself um, uh, just a bunch of a bunch of time on that uh, on that timeline for, for that background. Background's super basic, you know, like it's nothing to be to write home about, but you know, just so we have, we have something there. Um, here we go. Let's do F seven. I'm gonna onion skin. Whoops, not onion skin. And just give give myself a couple more frames. There we go. And so I'm still using that uh, that toe. I'm I'm basically trying to get my feet dialed down so that toe is still there, it's still facing that direction. Um, but then I place that other foot over here. It's kind of pointing towards it in perspective. It's a, it's, it's a weird pose to be sure, right? Yeah, because you have like these, these knees kind of facing each other. Like if I didn't look at reference, I probably wouldn't have drawn it like this, you know? Um, and then, this point He's facing kind of away from cam So he's transferring that fire into the other hand and really polish this up later. Um, I'm just gonna press F5 to give that a little bit more time. Um, and then we go forward one frame and do F7 to do a new frame. And then let's see what, what our next frame would be. Probably a passing pose right here, but I'm gonna get this one first. Let me get this one ironed out first. It's pretty important. So let's, you can see that my, that, that foot has not moved. It's still right there. Um, and it's going across, but the, I'm coming kind of at the camera now. So my other foot is pretty far down here actually, so can see that we would we would draw that perspective as well in there there we go and this has this this pose has a really clean line of action right there really clean so i want to get that represented as well And you got to get that booty in there too. Just make sure you're observing these poses. This is like the, the most powerful pose in the animation probably. Um, it's like where all of his strength is gathered in the, in the hand. And he has this 
this elbow kind of stretched out. Whoa. The head is behind that shoulder, but he's looking a little bit towards us, just a little bit. And yeah, so there we go. And then F5, go forward one frame. Oh, whoops, sorry about that. Go forward one frame, F7. Let's check out what our next pose is going to be. Let's get this bottom one like this, this, this passing pose. There we go. So this foot kind of landed now. And it's now stabilizing the front of our guy. It's kind of bending this way. I really recommend taking the class drawing figures in context if you had it. If you haven't yet, because it's super useful for this sort of stuff, super useful. Um, I don't know who teaches it anymore. I hope it's still Mark Michelon, but I don't know if he's, I don't even know if he's at the school anymore, you know? It was back when I was going, but, but yeah, that was a phenomenal class. So much figure drawing to be had. Um, really useful stuff. And then he's kind of going this way. I can already tell that I'm kind of losing uh, I'm a little bit off model, so I'm gonna need to do another pass once I get through all this basic posing um, to, to really dial in the proportions and stuff. So we have a nice, powerful sort of look at the face as he's casting that, casting that spell. And boom, and then let's go, let's keep going. Let's go to that last pose. Boom, right there. How did my foot slide into that pose? Oh, I cheated. I like rotate on the heel. Classic cheat right there. Noise, okay, so let's get this. There you go. Just going real loose with it.
And let's add some time right there. And let's do a little loop, you know, see what we got going. Boom. So you can see that it's already like we need to retime this, you know. Um, because like this happens way too fast. So now I can go through and with period and comma and just kind of scrub through and then press F5 to add time where I need it. I'm just going to add some seconds on there. Uh, let's drag this timeline to meet the end. And then let's see how that looks. Nice. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. But yes, yeah, so that's that's just the basic basic uh, kind of roughing in the the animation there. Um, you can see it with the uh, the background in there. Um, but yeah, so that's why that's why reference is super important. And then you just adapt it to your um, your character design. You just kind of take whatever character design you're going to go for, and then you you. You apply that motion. And then I, I, I do need to like get a few more poses in there, you know, for sure. Like I, I would like to rough out more of this big sweeping arc um, and then get like, get the pose where I break the back more, a little bit more cl like clear and communicate that more. Um, but yeah. But yeah, so that's, that's all that I want to do for now for you guys. Um, uh, next week, have, have basically this, you know, ha have just this set up. Uh, do, do like a more, more drawings than I've done here, but like, but yeah, this is pretty much it, you know, like you just have the scene. I would also get the, the, uh, the sort of, oh, whoops, sorry, that's the wrong video. It's the 3D reel. I would get these these poses in there as well, like the oh, oh like that sort of like, just they like, can't move, doesn't want to budge at all uh, towards the end as well. So like get get the whole scene represented and get a few more frames in there uh, than I have. But but yeah, so we'll be showing up with the the rough animation stuff next week, and it'll be it'll be really cool. Were there any any questions about this? I have a question. Yeah. Um, so do we have to have an established background or is it just the character? Oh, you can keep the background really basic. Um, mm -hmm. During the polish phase, you could you could give it a, a better background, you know, but um, but yeah, th this is this is fine, though. OK, this is, this is fine for now. I, I'd like a little bit like mine's just literally like three lines, like get, give a little bit more of a setting so mm -hmm. so you can tell like the story a little bit more um like that that knight that's unsheathing the sword you'd want to see that at like a door or something in the background right so so get right. something like that in there you know um whatever you need to to explain your scene for for people you know makes sense thank okay. you yeah, no problem All right, so I'm just gonna chill for a while then, um, while you guys kind of scrap together your stuff. We, we might be heading out a little bit early, um, but I just want to be around for for you guys to to ask questions and, and uh, you know if you have if you have any changes to your idea, let me know. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, Sheena, did you did you ever figure out what you wanted to do? Or are you still in? Yeah, uh... I'll probably do a fight scene or something. <laughs> um, I have the idea, kind of. I'm just looking for reference videos to try and oh, put it all yeah. together. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um, any any idea what the characters are going to be? Yeah, when I can't think of a character to use, I just use my own character. So. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I have yeah. a character. <laughs> Nice. 
Very dope stuff. Brenda, did you figure out what the direction for your scene you wanted uh, was going to be? Wait, did you say me? Yeah, yeah. Did you, <laughs> did you uh, get anything more more concrete about your idea? Yeah, I think um, I, I'm not sure if I want to do like changing of the camera angle. I don't know if I can finish that on time, so I'll see. Um, but I want to have them kind of sliding under stuff and like really up close and then it like pans out at the same time so you can really see them emote and like act mm, but okay. like but like enough to where it like finishes and it's not just like you know chopped off in the middle of them like doing an action yeah because okay. i always wanted to try and animate something like that and i haven't done it yet <laughs> yeah yeah it's the perfect place too yeah yeah so you said, wait, so uh, sliding sliding in uh, under something or, or what did you say? Yeah, like more towards the camera. Um, I kind of want us to do that, like try mm. that. Um, and mm -hmm. then kind of have it pan out as they like maybe land or something. I don't know if they're going to land or like, you know, do something, um, you know, more stumbly or whatever if they're trying to like escape something. But yeah, for sure. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Sounds good. Nice. And two no shows for the class. How could they do this to us? Could have been a nice class together. Probably because it's Friday. Right. Yeah, I they, think. Yeah. They were probably they probably woke up and were like, "What if I just slept more and didn't go?" <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I bet if I like check online, they might have like dropped the class or something, something like that. Yeah, I have this class in the morning and then like a shift in the afternoon, so I don't get to have that luxury of resting on a Friday morning. No, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's tragic. But it is what it is. But yeah, I'll be hanging out until 2.30. Um, and yeah, this is, just, this is just work in class time. There's going to be a lot of this because animation takes a long time and it's not as instruction intensive uh so yeah be ready for a lot of just working class times i actually have another question yeah What's up? um so for so for the for this final presented animation how detailed would you want us to go like would you would you want us to, to at least like is the animation more important than the design of the character uh yeah I, I would say the motion is is more important um but that that being said don't like don't slack on your draftsmanship you know like get it more detailed than this you know like like i i would try to i would try to get my my stuff um looking like that the the reference character um i would try for that that's what i'm shooting for you know because I, I kept it very simple um and uh we we're in in two weeks we're gonna have the like the polish week so that's when we'll be doing another pass on our stuff um making it nice and nice and clean uh my concept for my character good let's see oh well you send a screenshot uh let's see there we go let's open that up What? It's not letting me open it. <laughs> Try to paste it in. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, nice and nice and clean and uh, easily. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can you can definitely you can definitely use this. Do you mind if I show this to the class just to show them what someone else is doing? Or do you want to keep it secret? Sure. Thank mm -hmm. you. 